Hello aspirants welcome to like excellence welcome to the session on current affairs for beginners in this session i am going to tell you about the terms concepts schemes and institutions that appeared in today's newspaper that is 27th june 2018 let me give you answers for yesterday's questions the first question is regarding tuberculosis here all the statements are correct so the answer is c123 the second question is consider the following statements with regard to uday which will discom assurance yojana ministry of power is the nodal ministry to implement this scheme it is to revive the financial health of the discoms both the statements are correct but the question given here is which of the following statements are incorrect so the answer is d none and in the first article we have to concentrate on the word emergency here emergency means national emergency we have emergency provisions in the part 18 of our constitution that is from articles 352 to 360 we have in our constitution parts articles and schedules all the articles are divided into certain parts that is 25 parts and in that 18th part will says about emergency provisions in our constitution there are three types of emergencies that is national emergency that is another one is state emergency or president's rule and the third one is financial emergency now let us discuss on this national emergency in this we have to see mainly on which grounds this was this emergency can be declared there are three ways that is if there is threat of war or external aggression or armed rebellion then the president can proclaim national emergency even before the actual occurrence of war if he satisfied that there is imminent danger of these three or at the actual occurrence of these three before in this thing it was internal disturbance but this is a vague term and there is so much so potential to use this wrongly so after 44th amendment 1978 this term was replaced with armed rebellion term and before there is no judicial review what is meant by this judicial review the court can review certain matters under this judicial review before if a president proclaims national emergency the court cannot review that now after this 44th amendment act 1978 now national emergency or i mean court can also use its judicial review power on this proclamation of national emergency and this proclamation must be approved by both the houses within one month from the date of issue of this proclamation by the president before it was two months now again after this amendment act it was made as one month and if approved by both the houses of parliament the emergency continues for six months that is first if there is any danger president will proclaim national emergency and within one month parliament have to approve it and after this one month if parliament approves it it will continue for 6 months and it can be extended to any indefinite period but parliament have to approve for every 6 months and this provision was also added by 44th amendment act 1978 and we have to know with what majority did parliament approve this that is with special majority what is the special majority that is majority of total membership of that house and majority of not less than that is greater than or equal to two thirds members of the members of that house present and voting this provision of special majority was also added by 44th amendment act 1978 and 
how a proclamation can be revoked that is taken back this is also done by the president at any time by a subsequent proclamation that is by another proclamation they can revoke the first proclamation and that doesn't require any parliament approval if president want to revoke he can revoke or else that is if lok sabha passes resolution disapproving this continuation with simple majority then also the proclamation can be revoked here you should draw two things that is while approving parliament should approve it with special majority and while disapproving lok sabha alone sufficient and that to with simple majority and up to now national emergency has been proclaimed three times in 1962 1971 and 1975 The second article is reforms in public sector banks have taken a back seat. In this we have to see the word prompt corrective action. What is this prompt corrective action? This one is in news from several months because this is the tool using by RPI to make banks follow certain guidelines. it is rpi system in which it starts a corrective action when in any of these three factors that is capital adequacy ratio non performing assets and return on assets when in any of these three factors bank does not perform well then rpi starts its prompt corrective action what is this capital adequacy ratio this is the measure of risk over assets it is the ratio of capital to the ratio of capital to the risk weighted assets and this is the amount that banks have to maintain in the form of their own funds so that if they got any loss even then they can pay the dues of account holders and this ratio is determined by the rbi or basel 3 norms and this ratio is to protect the depositors and promote the stability and efficiency of the financial systems around the world and if capital adequacy ratio is 9% or more than that then rbi starts its prompt corrective action and the second one is non performing assets this is like a bad loan for which interest or capital amount become overdue for more than 90 days and if these npa or bad loans are more than 10% of the total loans of the bank then rbi starts its prompt corrective action and the third one is return on assets it is the net income generated through an asset if that income falls below 0.25% of the total asset value of the bank then also rbi stands its prompt corrective action the next article is elephant and threat is some considering sedation relocation of aggressive animals here we can see elephant threat what are the threats to this animal and what government is doing to rectify or to minimize these threats let us see that we have prosect tiger for this to protect the elephants their habitats that is the places where they live and the corridors and to address the first thing is to protect the elephants their habitats and corridors and to second to address the man elephant conflict that is here you can see human habitats and barriers have blocked the corridors means through our actions like laying roads in the forest or through any anthropogenic activity we are making some constraints to these elephants or to these herds to move and the third one is to ensure the welfare of captive elephants what mean what is this captive elephants these are kept in a confining area like 
zoos or circus or camps will keep some animals for entertainment or for educational purposes and these are fed by or cared by the humans and these animals are called captive animals and in particular here captive elephants for the welfare of these captive elephants to protect the elephants and to address the issues of man animal conflict this project elephant was launched by the government of india in 1992 and this is flagship conservation project that aims to conserve the elephants and its habitats across 10 major landscapes as we have discussed and this project is now implemented in 16 states of the country and the main activities under this project are ecological restoration of existing natural habitats and migratory routes of elephants the, that is the elephants where they are present or where they are migrated in that place is ecological restoration and the second thing is development of scientific and planned management for conservation of elephant habitats and viable population of wild asiatic elephants in the country that is for elephants and for wild that is wild asiatic elephants they were planning some scientific ways and the third one is promotion of measures for mitigation of this man elephant conflict in crucial habitats and moderating pressures of human and domestic stock activities in crucial elephant habitats and the fourth one is strengthening of measures for protection of wild elephants from poachers and unnatural causes of death and the fifth one is research on elephant management related issues they were starting research and the sixth one is public education and awareness programs and the seventh one is eco development and veterinary care and elephant rehabilitation or rescue centers and to monitor the poaching and poaching related activities project elephant is implementing the program monitoring of illegal killing of elephants this program is the program of sites that is the convention on international trade in endangered species of wild flora and fauna and this program they will measure the levels in friends in the illegal hunting of elephants and they will determine the changes in these trends next thing we have to see is tiger reserves the government of india has launched a project tiger in 1973 and under this project we got tiger reserves and presently there are 48 tiger reserves that spread over 18 states and this project tiger is administered by an authority that is statutory authority called as national tiger conservation authority and various tiger reserves were created in the country based on core buffer strategy what is this core and what is this buffer area the core areas are most restricted area and these are freed from all the human activities and this area has the legal status of a national park or wildlife sanctuaries and it is kept free of all the biotic disturbances and forestry operations like collection of minor forest produce grazing and other human disturbances are not allowed in this core area and the buffer area are subjected to conservation oriented land use they will conserve but there is some land use in this they comprise forest and non forest land so it is a multi purpose use area with two objectives the first thing is it will provide habitat supplement to spill over population of wild animals from core conservation unit and the second thing is it will provide site specific co developmental inputs to surrounding villages 
for relieving their impact on core area. And the last article is Chronicle of Victory Foretold. In this article, we have to see some terms like Sunni Muslims, Shia Muslims and Kurds. It is mentioned here Sunni and Kurdish nationalists. In International Relations of Paper 2, when you read about Middle East region, then you'll come across some terms like Arab Spring, ISIS, ISIL, Levant region, Sunni Muslims, Shia Muslims and Kurds. Some of these terms. You'll come across such terms. And if you can understand these terms well, then you'll be able to understand the concept or the current things more clearly. Now I'll say what is these three? Shia, Sunni and Kurds. Shia and Sunni are primarily a branch of Islamism. They primarily contrast in one thing. Shias believe that Prophet Muhammad has appointed a successor called Ali bin Abi Talib. But Sunnis believe that Muhammad did not appoint any successor and they consider Abu Bakr as Caliph. That is, after Prophet Muhammad, Shias believe that Prophet Muhammad has appointed a successor and Sunnis believe Prophet Muhammad has not appointed any successor and after Prophet Muhammad, just consider a caliph, that is a king caliph. And Shia Muslims are in majority in some countries that are Iran, Iraq, Bahrain and Azerbaijan and some countries they, they say in Yemen and in Lebanon these are Shia country Shia people are more but in some they say they are not and the larger Shia communities also present in some countries like Afghanistan India Kuwait Lebanon Pakistan Qatar Syria Turkey Saudi Arabia and the UAE but they are not in majority and Sunnis are most dominant form of Islam and they constitute 80% of Muslims worldwide and some of the Sunni dominated countries are Saudi Arabia, Egypt, Turkey, Syria. And the next thing is Kurds. These people are an ethnic group in the Middle East, mostly this region. That is, adjacent parts of South East Turkey, North Western Iran, Northern Iraq and Northern Syria. These people are asking for separate country that is Kurdistan. And try to answer these questions. The first question is based on core buffer strategy. And the second question is regarding national emergency. You can download the notes of this core at likes.in slash civilsprep. Thank you.